Let me tell you something. A lot of people use their work, their business, their profession, their success. A lot of people use their pursuit of education, their professional students. You've been in college for 30 years. And, and, and you just keep taking more and more classes and courses and more and more and more things. Or you work overtime, under time, side to time, round to time. A lot of people are church addicts. Every time the church opens, you're not just a member of the church. You don't just come to Bible class. You're in the choir and the usher board and the praise team and the will and the fried chicken committee and the this and the that and the other. And let me tell you something. If you succeed in every area of your life, if you succeed, you've got the best health, you're in the best shape, you're the best looking, you have the most formidable personality, you're successful, you're financially secure, you're respected every time you walk up down the street. If you succeed everywhere else and fail to have peace and joy and love in your home, what does it profit you to have all of this stuff on the outside and have no place to lay your head, to rest your mind? To know that this is solid and this won't shake and this won't break. It is very, very important to you. Foxes, whenever they sense danger or trouble or become weary, they always go running into their holes. That is the safe place. That's the secure place. He's grounded there. Whatever's going to come, I'm going to deal with it because I'm in a place of grounding. You understand what I'm saying? Birds of the air have nests. They say, I know there's a lot of things that want to devour me and want to get me, but if I can make it to this nest, I can get in this place where it is difficult to get me. If my nest is solid, if it's secure, and I had to build this nest, I had to work on this nest. So all of you who say, you don't understand my situation, you don't understand my house, you don't understand what I've been through, you don't understand my circumstances. No, you don't understand that nests must be built from broken branches. If you can build a whole nest from broken branches, you can build a whole house with broken people. But it's got to be built. The problem today is we want prefab houses. It's easier to go get somebody else's husband than it is to develop... <coughs> See, nobody wants to do the work of building the kid. They want to scream at the child. They want to beat the child. They want to yell at the child. But the child is a, has learned a lot of that behavior from what was modeled in front of them. And you have to get down on the ground level, wherever they are, even if it's the juvenile detention center, you got to go where they are and start building that child block by block by block while people are talking about you. While they're criticizing you, while they're saying, where is your God? And I thought you were a Christian. You don't have time to worry about what people think on the outside because this family thing is too important to, for me to be yelling back at my neighbors. I'm trying to build something out of these broken pieces that God has given me. Oh, glory to God. Where are my parents at? Build that child. What good is it to build a house if you lose the child? Build the child. The child will outlast the house. Build the child. The child will take care of you when you're old. Build the child. I know they're broken. I know they're crazy. I know they got on your nerves. I know they crush you out. I know you feel like nothing. But when you get to feeling like that, get down on the floor and start building that child. Because you can't have a mess if you can't work with broken branches, broken husbands, broken wives. Everything in your house is cracked somewhere. Everything cracked somewhere. Look around this room right now. Look around this room. Look at how handsome and good looking and attractive these people are in this room. Don't they look good? Dressed up and got the hair done. Look at the nails. Nails all shine up pointing at you. Isn't that nice? Smell like a rhododendron. Just wonderful. Glory to God. Isn't it wonderful? Just the air. And everything you see is cracked somewhere. And the only reason you don't know it is because you haven't got close enough to see where the cracks are. These three areas build 
that which is broken down. You got to have economic support. You got to have economic support. I know you all think that once you're a Christian, all you have to do is speak in tongues and wait on Jesus. The Jesus bus is going to come get you and take you to be with Jesus. But while you're waiting at the bus, you're going to get hungry. When I got ready to talk to my wife about life insurance, she said, I don't want to talk about that. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to have no discussion with you about that. I said, oh, yeah, we're going to have a discussion about this. She said, I don't, I don't know who you're going to leave it to because I ain't going to care. I'm going to be crazy. I said, you're going to be crying and you're going to be hollering and you're going to be screaming, but you're going to have to go to the bathroom so you're going to need toilet paper. You're going to get thirsty so you're going to need water. Sooner or later, you're going to get hungry so you're going to need food. And if we don't have no gas oil, you're not going to be able to eat. I've never seen anybody so grieved that they didn't go to the bathroom and eat and live and breathe and it's going to bring you back to reality. You need stuff. You need stuff. You can't pray away your need for stuff. You cannot put spiritual solutions over practical need. You cannot fix a physical problem with a spiritual solution. Sisters, more Jesus ain't going to make you more wife. I want to go to a text. They're having a discussion in the text about if you, 1 Timothy 5, 7. If any provide not for his own house, for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith. He has denied the faith. If you don't take care of what's yours, you have denied the faith. And it's worse than an infidel. When you look up the word infidel, you will find that it means unbeliever. But if you dig deeper, you will find it is not just an unbeliever who could have never been exposed to the gospel. It's somebody who's been exposed to it and rejected it. Let that sink in. Somebody who's been exposed to it and rejected it is called an infidel. You notice in the conflict with ISIS and terrorists, they refer to us as infidels. Because the purest form of the word infidel is that you have rejected the truth. In the Bible, when it calls somebody an infidel, it is that you had an opportunity and rejected it. In the text... It's talking about taking care of widows. And it says, if the widow has a family, if they don't take care of their own mama, grandmama, auntie, big mama, my dear, you are worse than an infidel. Worse than an infidel. If you don't take care of your own. You, birds take care of their own. Monkeys take care of their own. Frogs take care of their own. And you gonna walk past your own like you don't know them and say you love Jesus? I'd rather see some Holy Ghost frying chicken and making some chicken noodle soup than I would. But I'm a prophetess. You better prophet clean this house and go home and see about your grandmama. The Bible said you are worse than an infidel if you don't take care of your own house. If you're able to. Some people aren't able. You don't have it. You can't do it. But to some degree, you can do something. You can sweep. Watch this. An infidel is somebody who had an opportunity to receive truth and rejected it. An infidel, the Bible says you are worse than an infidel if you don't provide for your house. All right? God said, you have the opportunity to make that house work. But you starved it. You're worse than an infidel because you were exposed to something that you rejected, though you stayed in the house. Infidel. Somebody say infidel. Oh, infidelity. Root word infidel, primary meaning you rejected an opportunity. You know why you rejected an opportunity? Because you felt like you were rejected. 
You know why you felt like you were rejected? Because she didn't get the signal. How do you break the infidel infidelity when we start having real conversations about expectations and responsibilities mutually and you live up to yours and I live up to mine then there's not abandonment and if we're not abandoned then we don't have to fake like we love each other which creates resentment because love is hard to be faked so I will stop paying you money to let me go live I will start investing because I will no longer define myself by dollars. Church is so quiet. This ch- I went to the father's house. It was so quiet. So a lot of times we give you stuff to replace us. You know what I feel in this room? Let me something to you what I feel in this room. I feel in this room that there are a lot of people in this room who have abandoned kids because they hurt you, parents because they disappointed you, spouses because they didn't get the signal. I feel in this room a lot of people who are still there but not there. And so you're living your life like it's golden. Living my life like it's golden. It might be golden, but it's not grounded. And anything that's not grounded can blow away. It can blow away. And it's expensive to lose it. Emotionally, mentally. It's expensive generationally. I'm not saying you can't survive it. I'm not saying you can't make it on your own. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying you can't pay your own bills. I'm not saying you can't take care of yourself. You can do it, but there will be a deduction. Once I start showing them miracles, they're going to be drawn to my season of miracles. People are drawn to your season of miracles. Love your season of miracles. You can make it happen. Love your season of miracles. You did your thing on the football field. Love your season of miracles. People are drawn to your season of miracles. When you're in your heyday. When you're doing your thing. People love you. Faith of any kind always comes by hearing. You didn't believe you were dumb till you heard you were dumb. You didn't believe you couldn't learn till you heard somebody say you couldn't learn. You didn't believe you were unattractive till you heard somebody say. Your unbelief is a result of something you heard about yourself that you believed about yourself and your life has fulfilled the prophecy you heard about yourself. You're crazy like your daddy. You're just like your mammy. All of these are curses. They may not be cussing, but they're curses that were pronounced over you that said you couldn't do this, or that, or the other, and the more you heard it and rehearsed it and even argued about it and said you didn't believe it, every time you face a challenge, tell me the truth, don't those voices come back up? Every time you hit a low place, don't those voices come back up again? Every time things go wrong, don't those voices come back? You have never changed your belief. And you will never completely be healed or whole until you change the voice 
inside of your own head. And nobody, nobody can do this but you. New friends can't do it. New clothes can't do it. More money can't do it. More women can't do it. More sex can't do it. They can camouflage it, but they can't cure it because you are snared by the words of your own mouth. You can't get enough people to tell you you're pretty when you think you're ugly. That's why you keep needing some more. Until you change the words that are in your head, your opportunities will continue to hemorrhage. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Her issues were killing her. Twelve years, her issues were killing her. Twelve years, the life's blood was hemorrhaging out of her. It was coming out of her lower extremities, but it was coming from her mouth. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. It is coming out of her lower extremities, but it is coming from her mouth. Can you prove it? Yes, I can. What healed her did not come from her lower extremities. What healed her came out of her mouth when she said to herself, See, until she met Jesus, all she believed about herself was that I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. And so her money died because she was dying. Her relationships died because she was dying. Her heart was broken because she was dying. She couldn't have relationships. She was dying. She had spent all of her money because she was dying until she met Jesus. When she met Jesus, he changed the story. She told herself and she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I know. If I may but touch the hem of his garment. She didn't even say it to anybody. It was what she said to herself. Now, if you read it in the original language, when it says she said to herself, it says she said repeatedly to herself over and over and over again. Because when you're trying to drive out stinking thinking, you have to say it over and over and over. If I may, but Am I helping anybody? So she says, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She took another step. If I may touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She took another If I may touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. If I may touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made If I may touch the hem of his garment, I will, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I, if I may but touch. Hallelujah! Slap your neighbor and say, talk to yourself! Talk to your mind! Talk to your childhood! Talk to your dilemma! Talk to your crisis! Change your story!